Casual Diary Podcast, episode 230. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cash Flow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leverage streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. Hey guys, gals, people of all ages, how are you doing? Guess what? You got me again. Hopefully you liked it last time we did that and you've liked some of the ones where it's just me and you. Well, today what we're going to do, uh, there has been an interesting conversation going on in the members uh, group and I I, th- I figured you guys are having some of that same concerns or questions and I figured we'd just talk about it. You know, If you looked at the title of the episode, you realized that we're going to be talking about uh, overcome uh, object, objections and, you know, how to deal with those things that our potential buyers, sellers, and investors might possibly say. And I'm, I'm going to give you something that I know has been super successful for everybody who's been willing to adopt it, apply it, and uh, hopefully shed some light on just some ways of thinking. And I mean, uh, ultimately, uh, these things that you hear, the things that we say are rooted in what we believe to be true. And the question is, is are you willing to believe what you are hearing from the person that you're talking to? So when you're out there looking for business, prospecting, looking for opportunities, talking to people, and they give you a response, do you believe them more than you believe you? And that's really what it all comes down to. But I'm gonna do my best to illustrate and illuminate some of those things and give you a very, very simple system that you could use. You're probably gonna, I'm gonna just tell you now, you're gonna wanna have a pen and paper or, you know, whatever ready. I, I You know what? I, I don't know about you guys. I've been recently using the new iPad Pro and the pencil and they have gotten this thing on right. So maybe you're using an iPad Pro to take notes and because it they've really really have gotten that that thing right uh this time and i love every bit of it so maybe instead of pen and paper <laughs> maybe it's now pencil and pad <laughs> is what you're you're grabbing uh to to take some notes either way it goes uh i hope that you use what i am going to share with you and you know, I just hope that you're going to use what I'm going to share with you. And, you know, some of you, you may find that you want more and I understand all that. It's just one podcast episode. So, you know, I I can only do so much in in the time that we have together. Anyway, so here, here was the question. There's Michael uh, simply asked the question in the Facebook group. And guys, this is, this is like hot off the press, fresh. Uh, He simply said, when asking people if they considered getting involved in real estate investing, what are some of the most common objections you receive from them not getting involved or procrastinating to get involved? He just asked the question. I saw when I saw that he posted that question, I was just like, oh, this is going to be good. And I did not know, you know, what, you know, the, the some of the members had been hearing recently and. I figured if we bring some of that information here to you, we'll help everybody all at the same time, and it'll be awesome. Well, before I get into some of the responses that came back, uh, you know, obviously we have the, you know, things like too, it's too risky, I don't have any time, I don't have any money, and and, and I promise I'm going to get to answering all of those for you. Uh, we even got a, my brother's first cousin-in-laws tried that. I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, I'm sure somebody's received the, you know, my, my cat said I can't, you know, a type of information before. But before I get to those, 
I got to give you this framework that, that, that you should be working in. Now, remember, we're the real estate entrepreneur. That's what you are. You are the entrepreneur. You're out there seeking capital. You're out there seeking a new deal. You're out there uh, maybe even looking for a buyer for something that you've got right now. You're looking to grow your business in some tangible way. Now, I know it sounds counterintuitive, um, but uh, you just need to follow me on this. Uh, All of our business as a a real estate entrepreneur revolves around three people. Uh, Well, technically one person, uh, our customer, right? But we have three different types. They're either buyers, sellers, or investors, period. Buyers, sellers, or investors. They're buying something from us. They're sellers, meaning they're providing the inventory that we're probably going to resell later. Or they're investors and they're they're using their capital. uh, They're letting us use their capital, go out there to productive some sort of productive enterprise and to come back with more. At least that's the goal uh, when you're out there doing it. So I have three questions, really. And I'm telling you, these three questions used in this order are the magic secret to uncovering, unlocking, and making all of this happen uh, for you. So, uh, And that's where Michael was asking his question about because all of the members have been trained. They've, they've watched the videos. They've, they've learned the techniques, the intonations, the how to bring it up, etc. Uh, and this is very, very important when you're at a lot of gatherings. You know, you're at a holiday gathering, uh, celebrations, birthdays, whatever. You know, people talk about these things. Uh, New Year's, that's a popular time to always talk about, you know, these things. Anyway, I want to give you these three questions. So this is where you, you're going to want to remember them because if you can learn to use them and learn all that goes into it, it will help you uncover more buyers, sellers, and investors. So the the first question that I'm always uh, asking and I train everybody to ask, and it's verbatim, right? Do not go off script. I, I mean word for word. Don't change even a participle here. Nothing. That question is simply, have you ever considered getting involved in real estate investing. Now, that is the question. That is how you open this conversation to head down the path of finding out, is this a person, buyer, seller, and investor? I know it sounds crazy. It may not make sense to you. I got it. Just accept it. Have you ever considered getting involved in real estate investing? That's question number one. This is how it starts. Question number two Um, because they're going to answer that question, right? But after they answer that question, you're going to respond with question number two. And that question number two is is the magic sauce. I can't even believe that I'm going to tell you this, but this is the magic sauce to, to being able to unlock the keys within your business. You just simply ask them, really? Why? Two words. Serious. Really? Why? So have you ever considered getting involved in real estate investing? Yes. Really? Why? Have you ever considered getting involved in real estate investing? No. Really? Why? Either way it goes, the answer, what you're responding with is really why. And the interesting thing is, is what's going to happen is that after that, someone's, they're going to tell you why. And that's the, that, this is the subject, the meat of what Michael was asking. He's asking, after you ask somebody, have you ever considered getting involved in real estate investing? And they've said yes or no. What are some of the things that you've heard, right? And the, the answer is to always go really why, by the way. And uh, the, the third part uh, of this whole process, the third question, if you will, is to simply ask them what I call a do you think it makes any sense question. It's just simply a question that starts with a do you think, make, do you think it makes any sense? Because you're going to listen to the answer to really why and Ask them, hey, based on what you just said, do you think it makes any sense for us to get together later and talk about these things? You know, I, and I know it sounds crazy. I'm just telling you, it works. But what Michael was asking is, hey, in that process, occasionally people say some stuff and it could take you off track. <laughs> you know, you just you just don't know. You feel like you're supposed to say something different simple because of what they said. For example, uh, Susan responded that the one of the things that she heard is it's too risky. And she put too risky in quotation marks. So too risky. And it's like, have you ever considered getting involved in real estate investing? No, I haven't. Too risky. Well, 
the what you're supposed to say right there. Really? Why? I know it doesn't sound like that's what you're supposed to do. You, you're, it's, it, you feel your instinct is to jump on the prove it bandwagon and show them why your deal or whatever you're doing is, isn't too risky. Uh, that doesn't mean it, it's, there isn't risk because that's the one thing you don't want to do. There's risk in everything. Deals go up, they go down, uh, they go sideways. And I, I've had deals go up. I've had deals go down. I've had investors go up and investors go down. Um, it, it, it happens. You know, uh, I make mistakes. It's, it's human. It's part of it. Uh, we never hide. We, we do our best to continually communicate, uh, let people know, Hey, here's what's going on. And you do your best to stick in there and fix the problem. Yes, there is a risk. Uh, one of the, the, the biggest risks is, is you, to be honest, you, the real estate entrepreneur, they, that the, uh, the investor doesn't know how you're going to respond. And well, honestly, you don't know how you're going to respond either. But so it, it's not like the words too risky doesn't make sense to you. But there's some thinking behind that, that if and as you become a, a I'll say a, a not just seasoned, but professional information gatherer. And I talk about this a lot, but becoming a professional information gatherer, the, the real thing is to understand the words or the meanings behind those words. Because when I say the words too risky, I don't know what goes through your head, you know, um, but I promise you it's not the same thing as somebody else who's listening right now. Someone else right now is, is listening. We did a, we did some studies uh, and looking at some of our, our statistics, there's enough of you listening now that I know that approximately every 93 seconds, someone starts listening to the podcast. <laughs> so somebody's listening with you right now, just so you know. If you've been listening for more than 93 seconds and you have, somebody is listening with you. Um, and the the interesting thing is when they hear Too Risky, they're hearing, they, they have a completely different picture in your head than you've got. But you got to understand it's not about the picture that's in your head, but this is why the words like really why are important. And what you've got to learn to do is train yourself to stay calm and stick to the system. So how does that, what does that mean? Hey, have you ever considered getting involved in real estate investing? No, it's too risky. Really? Why? Because what you want to do is you want to find out why did they say it's too risky? See, another the, the thing to, to really hear is that there's a magic question that I learned uh, from a friend over at Real Estate Guys Radio, Robert Helms. He likes to ask, compared to what? It's one of the most important questions on the planet. Compared to what? It's too risky. Okay. It's too risky compared to what? See, when I want to be a little bit more aggressive, it's... Okay, I hear you're too risky. I'm going to raise you a compared to what? <laughs> you know, if I'm just being nice and gentle, it's really why. You know, uh, it's too risky. Really? Why? What would make you say that? Because, see, that there's something behind that. And what we must learn to do, as I said, become a professional information gatherer. We must learn to ask. Because what you don't know can, has, and always will hurt you. But it also hurts your potential buyer, seller, and investor as well. Too risky. Now, if I can't, you know, make people answer, but if they don't answer, then okay. I also have to be okay with that and understand that it's not my problem. It doesn't mean real estate doesn't work and it doesn't mean the deal is bad. It just means for them, they're not ready at this time. That's okay. But too risky. See, I can't give you an answer to too risky. And I don't want you to think you need to have some preloaded answer to too risky or try to prepare or be in some sort of position to prove that it's not too risky. Because as Les Brown would say, a man convinced against his will or woman is still of, is of the same opinion still. A man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. If they think it's too risky, then you're they're absolutely right. It is too risky. No problem. Right? And that that's fine. 
You know, I, I'm not here to try to, and you shouldn't either, convince them that it's not too risky. But that doesn't mean you just run the other direction, right? This is the dance. This is the part where I get excited, <laughs> to be honest, when it comes into, you know, real estate negotiations, figuring it out. What are you basing that on? Because I want to know. I'm curious. I, I'm naturally curious in that way. And maybe you know something I don't. There, there, there is that possibility. And if you do, I want to know too. What do you know that makes it too risky to do anything? And especially compared to the risk you're already taking. And this is probably the biggest thing that most people miss. Um, is that you're already taking a risk. You by leaving your currency in its current condition. So you think it's safe. Uh, and I don't care if the bank doesn't fail. Monetary policy dictates that you must do something. Current economic policy dictates. I don't care what country you're in. <laughs> and I don't care what language you speak. If your currency is some piece of paper that has no backing, well, guess what? Guess what? You must do something. Or I can guarantee you something. Your currency is becoming worth less every second, even right now as I'm talking to you. And there's nothing you can do about it, and you have absolutely no control. So compared to what, people? This is one of the things to understand. Sometimes the answers that we receive from individuals, they're, they're reflex answers. You know, here's another, you can test this anytime. Just ask somebody or, you know, next time someone says, hey, how you doing? Say, hey, I'm terrible, thanks. Right, I'll say that again, just in case you missed it. Next time someone says, hey, how you doing? Respond with, uh, I'm terrible, thanks. And if you can pull it off and smile at the end, it's good. You will hear how much they're not listening. And this is very, very true. Once we've accepted something to be too risky or too something, too anything. And that's why I'm sharing it with you. It's because oftentimes the responses that we're getting, they, they don't really make sense. And unless we carefully, lovingly, truthfully, transparently, have what I call a care frontation with the individual in question, they may continue thinking it's too risky. And you know what? I'm not saying it isn't. I'm just saying, let's examine what you currently hold to be true. And I'm just willing to do that with each and every question, each and every potential roadblock, each and everything that comes my way. I'm going to question. I'm going to inspect what I expect and wonder, hey, why do you believe that? Too risky. So you can probably guess that no matter the objection, no matter what is said, I'm going to apply this same type of thinking to it. You are absolutely right. I'm going to ask a really why or compared to what style questions. And I'm just going to vary the way that that comes out. It could be, okay, so let's take another one that came up. Someone said it was too risky. No, someone said, okay, here's, here's a popular one. I got no time. All right, cool. Have you ever considered getting involved in real estate investing? Well, yes, but I have no time. Or no, I have no time. Really? Why? Like, why do you have no time? <laughs> it's suddenly not about real estate investing. It's about them having time. Because see, my question is, is why don't you? Because I've got 24 hours every day. That's what I think we all have. So the concept of no time sounds interesting to me. Now, there might be time that we're not prioritizing for that, or we might think that there's something more important to that. And indeed, in your life at this moment, at this stage, there may be. That's fine. But no time? What does that mean? We all get the same number of hours, minutes, and seconds every day that we get the opportunity to call ourselves alive. And what do you mean you have no time? 
if it's not that important to you, that's one thing. If it's not a priority, that's another. But no time. That doesn't really make sense. Especially if you're the real estate entrepreneur, because isn't the the very thing you're offering? You're offering your time, your knowledge, your time, your expertise, your ability to fix it when it goes wrong, your ability to make it go right so that they don't have to use their time? Isn't that what you're doing? So what does it really mean when they say no time? Because I don't know, but I am willing to question. Hopefully you are too. Um, Another popular one was, <laughs> I got no money and you got to spend money to make money. So I, I find that interesting. Well, I didn't really ask you if you had money. That's usually what I'm thinking in my head. So understand, in the back of my head, I'm thinking, I didn't ask you if you had money. Now, if I'm being uh, precocious and very, very, you know, uh, in that, if I'm in one of my moods, I'm liable to say, you know, I really didn't ask you if you had money. I asked, have you ever considered getting involved in real estate investing? Somehow that got collapsed into, do you have any money? <laughs> but that's not what I asked. Have you ever considered getting involved in real estate investing? Because, see, having gotten started the way that I did, um, I am very well versed in understanding that, you know what? It does take money to make money. However, it's what you call money. That's the issue. So there's a way to make real estate work without any currency. And that's the difference intellectual capital becomes the real money in that particular case. And that could be the very way that you could get in if you just knew and understood the techniques instead of collapsing it all the way down to, I got no money. All right. I understand. Now, see, you're being armed right now with this thinking and it, and it should empower you to move past some of these very, very, very common things. Because these are the things that were coming up, you know. Um, these were the things that were coming up for many of the members. And I know many of them are listening right now because uh, and, and at the end of the day, they're, they're being reminded that it's really why. And compared to what? You know. Uh, another one that was popular... <laughs> is uh, uh it's a scam or it's not for me <laughs> i'm like wow that was strong what what does that mean what is i because i i really don't know now you know um really why <laughs> it's not for me really why why not i am now uber curious because i don't know if you guys realize this but if if you're listening to me on the way to work, you realize that you're going to go work in a piece of real estate or on somebody's real estate. And if you happen uh, to be passing a, a billboard right now, do you realize that that billboard's attached to somebody's real estate? And if you're listening on a cellular device, do you know that it's connected to a cell tower, which is uh, attached to somebody's? real estate. Um, and if, if you're listening at home, you're in a piece of real estate. Uh, and, and you could be just about anywhere. And you're probably connected to a piece of real estate, unless I guess for those of you who are in the air flying somewhere right now. The point is, real estate, my friends, you're already participating in it. So when you say it's not for you, I find that interesting. I'm like, you're already playing the game. You're just paying into the system without withdrawing any. And if you're okay with that, that's fine. I want you to make a conscious decision. I don't want you to reflexively go, it's just not for me. Now, for those of you who are listening, it, it's obviously for you. That's why you're listening. And what I'm working to do is to arm you with the thinking and just show you how two simple words, really why, and a little bit of compared to what thinking actually handles 99% of anything that's going to be thrown at you if you can just keep your emotions in check. 
Because see, that's what happens when someone presents us something that we are suddenly concerned that, oh my God, I don't have some snappy, cool answer. We get a little afraid. And it's been scientifically proven. When we get afraid, we start thinking with completely different areas of the brain. And more importantly, our emotions go up. Therefore, our intelligence goes straight through the floor. And uh, I guess that's why we have the Darwin Awards. (laughs) Here's the point. The more you practice this, the less that'll happen to you. In fact, I'm willing to bet just hearing this podcast, this training, if you will, will lessen the anxiety the next time you hear it. You'll feel like you've got a script. I'm like, oh my God, Jay said they were going to say that. I know what to do. That's correct. Breathe, smile. Really? Why? And keep it that simple. See, you, you can do this. Totally. You can do this. So I, I just always remember to, to question these things in this very fashion. And, and I think you'll be able to make us significantly more progress. See, the, the challenging thing, the most challenging thing about real estate is that it's the business model that I am aware of that requires the most number of relationships just to get one transaction done, regardless of transaction size. So even if all you want to do is a $10,000 house, $20,000 house, $50,000 house, 200 million euro building, I don't care. It's going to require a, a significant number of relationships. And in some cases, The same number of relationships are required for a a 100,000 euro house as well as a a, a 50,000 euro house or a a million dollars. It doesn't really matter the currency. It doesn't really matter the denomination. The process is very, very similar. You still have to talk to people. And that's the interesting thing. We've forgotten how to do that. We've forgotten how to care and actually help someone and understand, hey, here's what's going on. What I do find interesting is that, you know, doctors, dentists, um, so coaches in general, salespeople, um, as well as engineers, uh, we, we've had a ton of success with because I think their professions require them to ask so many questions because they know they don't have the answer yet. And I think it predisposes them to being successful here uh, on the real estate world, simply because they're they're accustomed to becoming professional information gatherers or pigs, as I like to call it. You have to be a pig, right? And that's that's really what it comes down to. So Joel was saying uh, that uh, he got uh, the, the what he heard was there are no guarantees, too risky, and the ever popular fear of losing it all. Well. Really? (laughs) Why? There are no guarantees. I know, right? And we've all heard Clint Eastwood say, if you want guarantees, get a toaster, right? Or was that John Wayne? It's one of those Western guys. Too risky. We've talked about fear of losing it all. You know what? Uh, you, You really can't take it with you, but I understand. There is an emotional attachment to our currency. You know, uh, there was an episode a while back with Josh and Lisa Landon. Uh, you may be familiar with them. Uh, they're part of the Rich Dad Advisors crew. Uh, and, you know, Josh said something that was very important. He said, people are addicted to money. And he's in a position to understand addiction, having overcome it, and having a business that helps people overcome the same thing. And he, he, he gets that. And I find it interesting, you know, but we can have an unhealthy relationship with the currency in our pockets, wallets, bank accounts, etc. And I'm, I'm not saying you shouldn't be afraid of losing it all. I, I it there's some respect for that. But that doesn't give you the excuse, not in my opinion, to sit there and do nothing, especially given, as I said earlier, current economic and monetary policy of every nation on the planet, period. There isn't a nation 
right now getting it right. You don't have an option. You must become smarter. You, it's no longer safe to, it's not been safe for a long time to just sit around and do nothing. It is what it is. You know, it is what it is. So, typically the, the objections are going to revolve around something that the person feels that they lack. Well, fear of losing it all, maybe they, you know, they lack the courage. You know, I'm not, I can't see myself being brave enough to actually take that kind of a risk. I can understand that. Or, or maybe they, they lack the knowledge. They're like, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. And commonly, you know, I don't have money. I don't have credit. I don't have the access to the resources that I need to actually execute or what I believe I need to actually execute. Well, here's the cool thing about that, entrepreneurs. Hopefully you're listening. They just told you what it is they're missing and what you need to supply so that they might actually move forward. This is why the magic, do you think it makes any sense? Well, makes sense. And you've got to just go out there and ask them. So let me give you a quick recap. What you're going to do is have you ever considered getting involved in real estate investing? Just ask the question. You're going to hear what they say and you're going to go, really? Why? And you're going to be in the back of your head with that compared to what thinking going on. And then you're eventually just going to wait. And hey, you know, Frank, based upon everything you just said, do you think it makes any sense for us to sit down later and talk about some of these things? And Frank's going to answer. And that might be the very opportunity you've been looking for. It's been fun talking to you today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time.